Hello and welcome to another KSP series. This time I'm going to be running through how to build some better rockets. We're going to talk about a few different concepts and hopefully I'm going to teach you a thing or two about getting things to space. Now the first thing is a payload. Now a payload is whatever we want to take to space. Now that might be a capsule, it might be uh, a satellite, it might, it's anything we want to take up and put in orbit. So those, uh, those things, they add up to weight. Now, you might, uh, it might be really light, it might be really heavy. Uh, that depends on your mission. So the first thing to do would probably be to figure out what you actually want to put up. So th this is a, you know, that could be a satellite and that could be, you know, a command pod. Early in the game, you want to achieve orbit and generally you're going to be wanting to lift something like the command pod. So what we'll do is we'll just start with that because it probably makes sense. Uh, now we need a parachute, okay, and we're going to need a heat shield, and we're going to need a decoupler. Now for the sake of this, this is our payload. As you get further in, in the game, your payloads will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now. Let's go with rocket one, number one. Now, with uh, designing rockets, there are two pieces of information that are absolutely, absolutely important. If you don't have them, you're playing the game blindfolded. Now, what you need to know is the thrust to weight of a rocket and also the delta V. The thrust to weight is the craft's ability to overcome gravity. So for example, if I just grabbed a quick fuel tank, right? And I grabbed a really little engine. Okay, you can see the thrust to weight of this is 0.94. This wouldn't get off the ground here on Kerbin. If I grab a much bigger engine, for example, something like a mainsail, you can see this has got 20 times the power of that. So this is going to overcome the force of gravity and that's what we need. So to get that information you need one or two things. You either need Kerbal Engineer or Mechjib. I think there's a couple of others that do it as well but go get it. It needs to be in the stock game. It's not. Just go get it and you'll be fine. So we've got our payload. This is what we want to lift to orbit. Now what we need to get to orbit is we need a thrust to weight greater than one and we also need the delta V to be around about 4,000. Uh, there's people that have done it in 3500, 3600 kind of range. I like 4000, it's a nice round easy number and it gives me room to screw up. Which is going to happen a fair bit in this game. So with that in mind, let's let's get a, uh, a rocket designed. So with, uh, with a rocket, uh, generally you want to have more than one stage. If I was to try and do this in one stage, and I could. Engine. Let's grab the uh, T30. Okay, you can see our thrust to weight is 1.9 and our delta V is 3.4. So if I grab, let me just explain what I'm doing here. So what you wanna do is you wanna keep your thrust to weight somewhere between 1.5 and 1.7, okay? If you don't have thrust to weight, you need more engines. If you don't have enough delta V, you need more fuel. Okay, this, this is fuel, this is engines. Fuel, engines, fuel, engines, fuel, engines. So right now, we've got enough engines, okay? There's one rocket engine is enough to overcome the force of gravity as it sits. So we need more fuel. So let's go get some more fuel. Stick it on here. Oh, now you see, I can continue adding fuel to this uh, but it's going to start hitting a point of um, diminishing returns, and this is the thing with rockets. Okay, we've got the delta V that we want, but our thrust to weight is a little bit low. With rockets, you carry fuel to burn fuel, if that makes sense. The stage on top ends up being around 10 times smaller, give or take, than uh, what you're actually uh, your entire rocket. So we want to lift. Uh, a payload that is 1.3 tons and the total weight of our craft actually ends up being um, 16 tons so 
you can see that there's a, there's a really really big um, diminishing return there. So with this, I've got two choices. I can add more engines to get the thrust to weight up, or I can use a little bit of basic staging. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a little bit of staging because I know that a two-stage rocket is more efficient because we don't have to drag all this weight all the way up here to orbit. We can get rid of it halfway through when it runs out of fuel. So we'll grab that. Now, engine choice. Let's, let's talk just quickly about engine choice. Engine choice depends on ISP and where the engine's going to be firing. So for example, you see here the swivel and the reliant. This, this is strictly for early game. It holds true for the later game too. The reliant and the swivel both have ISPs. Let me just see that ISP 280 at, at sea level. Okay, probably means something else, but that works for me. So at sea level, 280, and then it goes up to 300 in a vacuum. This is 270 at sea level, and goes to 320 in a vacuum. So you can see that these, this T30 is slightly more powerful at uh, at sea level relatively and this is slightly more powerful in a vacuum. Now if I come up here though, you can see that this one has 85 ISP at sea level and 345. What this means is we now have effectively uh, atmospheric engines and orbital engines. So this, this is much, 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 much better when we're in space. So we don't want to be firing this when we're on the ground. This is big and heavy though. You can see it's 1.5 tons, this is 1.25 tons. So we can save a bit of weight and get better fuel economy if we use a smaller engine when we get up higher in the atmosphere. So I've included this on here and that will give me a really, really nice orbital engine because remember this first stage is gonna take me a way up in the air. Where is that decoupler? There it is. Right, okay, so now we have a rocket, okay, that is two tons lighter but suddenly it has 700 more delta V. And our thrust to weight is really, really nice. So in this way, we can kind of balance the thrust to weight, we can balance the delta V, and we can come up with ways to, to build an efficient rocket. With rocket building, you only want to build it so that it does what you intend it to do. You don't want it to be able to go to ELU when you just want to get it to orbit, okay? It doesn't need to have 10 kilometers per second. You know, this has got 4.7, that's more than enough. That's going to be tons. We get, we'd get, we actually be able to probably do a flyby of the moon with this uh, with this rocket. Uh, not quite. It'd be close though. You'd get there. You wouldn't be able to come back or land or stop or turn around. Uh, so with, uh, with this, we just need some more things quickly. We need some wings. Now here's a pro tip for you. Uh, there's the launch pad, okay? So generally I like to line my wings up so that they're, they're um, in the same orientation because when we launch, we're going to want to do a turn. Okay, and this gives these um, control fins the best, uh, the most accurate control. If your craft is rotated 45 degrees, okay, when it goes to turn, all four fins are going to be working instead of one. Oh crap, I just deleted all of that. That is unfortunate. I'll have to build it again quickly. Luckily, it's a simpler, simple rocket. Now, to actually build this um, straight away in Korea, you'll have to do a fair bit of grinding. So you're gonna have to do something a little bit interesting to actually get a rocket into space in Korea mode. Uh, but with, uh, with Kerbal Engineer, or MechJib, if you're using that one, you can do it quite easily because you know the delta V, you know the thrust to weight, and you can work backwards from there and think, okay, well, if I want to lift a capsule, I know exactly what I need to do. So let's talk about uh, control quickly. So I've got the fins, they're gonna control me in the air. The capsule also has something called reaction wheels. Now you'll get them later in the game. Here's a small one. That's the medium one and that's the large one but all the pods have some reaction wheel control. That means they have uh, a spinning wheel in them that can change your orientation. So these, these have five. That means that the top stage will be able to orientate itself fine in space. 
for the atmosphere though, it's going to struggle. So that's why we've got the fins on the bottom. Also, the fins on the bottom uh, help prevent flips and all kinds of crazy stuff. So let's go launch and do a quick orbital thing. Right, SAS activated by the T key on your keyboard. Okay, X throttles down to zero, Z thr throttles up to 100%. Important to have it at 100% throttle. We'll just check our staging quickly. Yeah, I think we're okay. Yep. Right, so with that, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, let's go to space. Now, immediately after launch, what you want to do is tilt over a couple of degrees to the right. This is how they do it in real life. Make sure the rocket actually moves away from the pad. If it was to fail now, it'd go straight back down on it. Now, throughout our launch, we want to keep this uh, our marker inside the prograde marker. So the prograde marker is the little yellow bit, and that shows you which way you're going. Well, actually, it shows you where your velocity vector is, which is a little bit different, but I'll uh, we'll just say it's where we're going. So we want to keep it there. Now, what I'm aiming to do is I'm aiming to hit the 90 at 10,000 kilometers. So I need to speed up a little bit. So I'll push it to the right edge now. Try and keep that turn rate up. You can see now our time to apoapsis is growing. So we'll keep it on the right hand side. We need to push that turn as fast as we can now as we're a little bit behind. And we don't want to get too far off it. If I was to point it over here, my rocket would flip. And that's not going to be much fun. So we're a little bit slow, that's fine. Now there's something called Max Q. Now it's a really, really um, cool thing in the game. It's, it's a real life rocket problem. Basically it is the region of maximum dynamic pressure. It's the point at which your craft is going so fast that the forces from drag hit this kind of ceiling. Um, if your rocket is too powerful, you will need to throttle down. Uh, we've, uh, we've designed a really nice rocket here that's just going to cruise straight through it and uh, we're not going to have one little problem at all. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just actually going to hold our rocket up a little bit, hold it towards the back just to get that apoapsis up a little bit more. Okay, there we go, that's the stage. Now what I'll do is I'll flatten it out a little bit more. And what I'm doing basically is I'm just watching this apoapsis number whilst keeping it um, tilted over as far as we can because we're starting to get to the point where the top of our trajectory will be in space. I'll go to 75k. There we go. Now, normally in real life, they'll make uh, one big long burn all the way through. But because of the dimension, dimensions of Kerbin, uh, that's a little bit harder to do. So this, this is fine. Um, you won't be able to do this until you've got patch connects. So which is the second level of the tracking station. But basically what we're going to do is when we hit roughly the top of our arc, we're just going to burn like crazy. We're going to hit the, uh, the horizon and go like crazy. We've got 1900 meters per second. And you can see that we're only going to need 900 to make this orbit. So that's really good news. We've made a really efficient rocket. We've flown a good ascent and we're on the money. And I'm quite happy about that actually because uh, I was worried that I was going to crash. You never know when you're going to in this game. And uh, this pilot, uh, this uh, this flight is... Well, hang on, we're going a little bit quick here. So we'll burn here, we want to normally halve that. So whatever the burn time is, halve it. Because uh, that way your velocity is figured half before, half after. This assumes that you're going to impart all that delta V at that very second. So we want to burn half either side to spread it out. Okay, and we're going to burn like crazy, burn like crazy, burn like crazy. Because right now what's happening is our orbit is being grown. You can see here this negative number. It's a nonsensical number. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever because it's below the ground. But this will slowly increase until it comes out the other side. And when we do that, we're in orbit. So we're nearly, nearly there. And we'll just uh, fine tune by going prograde, there we go, that'll do us, we're in orbit, we've got a nice uh, nice orbit there, 
and we're in space. So there we go. That will conclude this uh, this tutorial. We've built a nice uh, a nice little rocket that um, has taken Valentina to space and has plenty of fuel to spare. Like this could go a long way. It could take high science and then still return with tons back to Earth. Sorry, Kerbin. Let's let's just see, right? To deorbit this thing. All we would really need, well, we wouldn't even need that. 40 meters per second is all we're going to need to deorbit this thing. If we went up higher, it'd be a little bit more. But at the end of the day, it, once you're in orbit, you're halfway to anywhere. So thank you very much for joining me for this uh, this tutorial. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. What we're going to do is we're going to cover some early game rocket concepts, uh, talk about he heavy configuration lifters, and generally have a bit more fun.